Hi everyone, and welcome to another Gospel X, Gospel According to the X-Men, and this is for um, season two, season two, episode, episode three. three. And uh, what we're gonna do before we begin, we're gonna show you the clip, and then Bring we'll come back. Over, Morph. You're coming with me. I don't think so, old man. I figured you might follow me. You never were very bright. What do you think of your final resting place? Whatever you're going through, Morph, I've been there. The professor saved me. I'm gonna save you. A little late, aren't you? Oh! You're coming with me, one way or another. Come on, give it up! My name is Jonathan, and this is my friend Henry. And uh, so, Henry, let's start off with you. What are uh, some of the takeaways that we could discuss this oh. morning? Uh, number one, I think, is how hilarious Wolverine is, right? <laughs> his, uh, I'm gonna save you. <laughs> his uh, idea of what it means to help somebody is kind of kind of weird, kind of strange, because uh, uh, obviously. Um, during the season one and the beginning of season two, we see Morph um, go through. He was friends with the X Men. Right. Feels like he got betrayed. Yeah. Betrays them, um, and now he's in this very dark place. Personally, um, Wolverine knows he's he's uh, alive, so he tries to go and pursue him yeah. to go and help him. Yeah. But the way he does it is, I will help you one way or another, um, and you're coming with me. Basically, just trying to force his help yeah. onto Morph, wh whether or not he wants it or not. And we kind of see uh, what this leads to. Yeah, so why do you think that he, he felt that he was qualified to help Morph? Well, we're in the scene. He talked about how Wolverine said, I know what you're going through. Uh, I went through the same thing. The professor uh, helped me. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? Because uh, uh, usually... The first thing uh, that we are told or, or taught sometimes is that if you cannot empathize with that person, if you've never been through it in the first place, you should just not step in and help. But this time, it's like Wolverine did experience this. He did experience this. So he thought, thought okay, step one completed. I checked the criteria. I'm fully qualified to help more I should jump in, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but what is wrong with that? Well, the <laughs> wrong thing is that you're you're forcing someone to accept your help right. when they they don't need it. And then later on in the when they were fighting, at the end, Morph was saying that he this is something that he needs to deal with himself. Right. Basically telling Wolverine that, you know, he's in pain, right. but it's a pain that he needs to go and work through personally and he's not ready to share it with other people yet. Yeah. Which is tough. It is tough. It's it's a tough admission yeah. to say that, you know, you, you there's something that you need to deal with. Or well, it's even tough for the friend, right? And like for us to try to help that person because we kind of know that, no, we understand what you're going through and we know the exit strategy to get it. Like, but your friend is, who is suffering, like more if it's not willing to receive it, they have to navigate it themselves and we have to. It's tough for us to accept that. Mm -hmm. That's so fact. in a Christian perspective, do you feel that it's right to force the help on somebody or help somebody um, when you see that they're in pain, but they're not willing to accept it yet. Yeah. Well, before we were back, uh, going to record this episode, we were just talking about this, and I was thinking about Paul, but actually, the better example is actually Jesus. <laughs> no kidding, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> the better example is Jesus. Like, 
Uh, majority of the time when he heals somebody, he actually invites that person and asks them whether they want to be healed or not. Uh, the greatest example, the best example, I think, it's the one where the paralytic was at the uh, pool. Uh, where he was being helped to the pool. Every time the pool was stirred up, uh, his uh, people would help him to get to the pool. And then, uh, but uh, sometimes he comes up short and so never seems to be able to get there. So he, so he goes back, his, his people would t- take him back so he continues to beg. And then Jesus passed by and he saw this paralytic and he asked the question, do you really want to be healed? Right? And it's an interesting question because of course the guy wants to be healed. Well, that's what we think. Of course he wants to be healed. So Jesus heal him, right? But really, Jesus actually wants to uh, invite us to whether we want to be healed or not first before he even imposes that healing. Simple stuff like obvious things of healing is even an invitation, not something that's imposed on us, which is really uh, quite intriguing and yet something that we should learn as well. Like for us who are maybe loving, like we have loved ones who we care about and are going through struggles, like whether it's depression or anxiety or loss, sense of loss and grieving, that maybe there are times like we shouldn't jump in right away, even though we feel we're perfectly qualified, that we should just say, okay, invitation is that I'm open, my phone number is available, give me a shout when you're ready. So what the thing that you're trying to emphasize is even though they don't accept your help, the invitation itself right. sometimes is, uh, the is best just love as that, important. But the best love you could actually offer. Mm-hmm. Right? The invitation is actually maybe the best love that you can offer aside, and instead of actually being actively <laughs> intervene. Yeah. I will save you. I will save you. <laughs> One way or another. One way or another. Uh, accept my love. Which could do more harm than good. <laughs> right? So anyways. Anything else that you want to add? I think that's pretty good. All right. Thank you so much for joining us again with another Gospel X. Till next time, have a blessed week.